Hi, Catherine. Hi, Tom. How are you? It's so nice to see you again. Me too, thank you. It's been a while. Yeah, thanks for having me. So you play uh, Moira Rose, formerly rich and famous soap opera star. I do, yes. Learning to live with a lot less. Last time we saw your character, it was at the end of season three. She had done something uncharacteristically sweet for her daughter. <laughs> shown up at her high school graduation with a surprise. Let's take a listen. Baby, I'm yours. And I'll be yours until the stars fall from the sky. Yours until the rivers all run dry. In other words, until I die. Baby, I'm yours. Baby, I'm yours. That's real pretty. That is Catherine O'Hara <laughs> singing as Moira Rose. I love how you say it was something sweet she did, because really, I show up with a ridiculous outfit, and it's all about me being on stage. I don't know. I didn't see it that way. I saw it as, like, a nice thing to do. No, it was. For Moira, it was very nice, yes. What is, uh, uh, what's different about playing her in season four as opposed to season one? Well, like that moment, um, I think the family is still getting to know each other. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so all those moments that normal, loving families have... Um, are all fresh and new to this family. And so we're having more of those and getting to know each other more, and I'm learning to be a mother. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just all new to us, and so hopefully it comes off fresh and new to the audience. Are you still having fun? Yes. Yeah? It's really great, yeah. I was so looking forward to just to today and being with the cast and going around doing lovely things like this. And It seems like there is a real honest love between you all. I mean, you, obviously yeah, you and Eugene for years. Yeah, but, it, uh, well, it's also Eugene and his lovely son, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they run the show and the whole vibe is just lovely and uh, I mean, not just lovely and not just lovely and fun and everyone's sweet and those men are gentlemen. The Levy men are great gentlemen. Um, but also the work is really good. Mm -hmm. You know, the material's great and I'm really grateful to uh, still have a job in this world <laughs> and and to be doing something of, I think, this quality and something that people are actually watching and enjoying and we're still getting to make people laugh. It's really, I, I feel grateful for that. It's a beautiful thing. When we, we were listening back to that clip, it made us think here, Q, about that you you sang a lot more in your roles than I think we thought you you had. <laughs> Um, uh, we, I thought we'd dig into a little a bit about that today. Do you do you like singing? I do, yeah. Yeah. Do, Did yeah. you grow up with the music? Especially family? under the uh, the guise of trying to be funny. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, because I just love singing. Right. Yeah. Did you grow up with your family musical? Yes. Oh, my sister Mary Margaret. Well, I was going to bring her amazing up. Amazing singer. Yeah. One of the greatest singers. And songwriter. Yeah. Producing. Yeah. Um, yeah. My mom was a great singer. Uh, there was always music playing in the home. What kind of songs? Uh, mostly big jazz. Yeah. Or big band jazz, big jazz, mm -hmm. big band jazz, you know, Tommy Dorsey and Glenn Miller and Frank Sinatra and all that, you know, that great old stuff. Um, I was hearing that in a car. I was driven to the airport in L.A. the other day, and, and it was a jazz station. It was all, I guess their Sunday program was all that old music. And I just thought, oh, I'm in the kitchen. Dad's <laughs> got the radio on. And were you all singing back then, too? Yeah, a lot of singing. My mom would sing a lot, and... Uh, yeah, and actually, everyone, we have seven kids in our family, and they can all carry a tune, and that's... Pretty incredible, I think. You, you talked in the past about how character development is really important to you in comedy. Yeah. So does that go for how they sing, too? Do you put a lot of thought into how they sing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That actually frees you up, too, if you, you know, like, in, um, I remember waiting for Guffman. We sang in that, and I was the only one, I thought, that really showed a lack of talent in singing, <laughs> which I like to think was a character choice. <laughs> to <laughs> try to sing as, you know... Yeah, you don't sing your best if that character can't sing their best. Or you really, the scary part is when you want your your character to be a good singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, m I'm not as confident as Moira pretends to be. Well, maybe Moira's not that confident, really. Obviously, she's not. She's pretty desperate. Mm -hmm. But um, um, you know, like singing "Baby, I'm Yours." We did a lot of takes, and I was really hot. This big, <laughs> massive. I don't know what I was wearing. Some. Uh, oh, Wooly Beast. Yeah, right. All those things. Yeah. yeah. It's like that it was just so hot and I was getting nervous about just wanting to sound good. I mean, I hear it now today and I'm like, oh. That sounds good could. to me. Well, thank you. But um, yeah, I think if I can, if I'm thinking from the character's point of view, singing, it always makes me less nervous. I've been doing, last few years, um, 
Nightmare Before Christmas. Well, yeah, I want to get to that. Show where they, they show the movie and the orchestra plays, beautiful big orchestra plays uh, the score mm-hmm. for the whole movie. And then they'll stop right before a song and say, ladies and gentlemen, the original voice of, and we come on stage and sing. And I have to think, okay, I am this animated character, Sally. I'm not me singing in front of. If The more I could think from the character's point of view, the it frees me up. Can we can we go to that, Mitch? Do we have uh-huh. that? This is this is Catherine singing. I didn't even know this was you. This is Catherine singing in The Nightmare Before Christmas in 1993. This is Sally's song. I sense there's something in the wind that feels like tragedies at hand. And though I'd like to stay That's Catherine O'Hara, my live guest in studio, singing Sally's song in The Nightmare Before Christmas. I've seen that film a lot. Yeah. I think I knew you voiced it. I didn't know you sang the song. Yeah, I sing that, and then I sing uh, with, uh, Lock, Shock, and Barrel. I'm Shock, mm-hmm. the little character with the witch's hat. Yeah, we sing uh, Kidnap Sandy Claus. What does what listening to that remind you of? Uh, a couple of weeks ago when I did it in right. Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's that like? And singing the same key. We're singing the same key still. It's like 25 years now. What's it like to get up and, and sing those songs 25 years later? It's scary and great. I've never sung, before doing these shows, I've never sung with an orchestra. Right. And that's amazing. But you can almost not appreciate it. Have you sung with an orchestra? Uh, no, I haven't. It's I guess um, I was in a musical one time, but maybe that counts. Yeah, that counts. Why maybe. not? Are they on stage with you? Probably no, they not. were in the They're pit. They were in the pit. pit. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's pretty incredible. It was but the I don't know if it's the same thing. <laughs> Come on, get out <laughs> of here. That's the pits, I oughta. Um, oh, buddy. No, but in rehearsal, you know, you're in a big sound stage, so you rehearse with the orchestra, and it's just great to turn around and look at them. Oh, my God, there's a real violinist play, this cello. Look at the little harps. But then when you're on stage, it's all coming out of the monitor. So you might as well be doing karaoke because mm-hmm. you don't really get a sense. Of, I keep having to remind myself, there's a real orchestra behind me. But you can't, it's hard to get that when you've got, you know, you're just hearing it through monitors. But I, I don't think people think of you as, as a singer. But when we were looking back. And that's rightly so. <laughs> but you, you've been singing your whole life. We, can we cue up that SCTV oh. clip? This is you as the entertainer Lola Heatherton <laughs> on, on SCTV. <laughs> I wake up every night in bed and panic thinking that I'm dead. No chance for love. I feel my fading heartbeat stop. No if you're listening to this on the radio, I want to point out the pure, un- unadulterated joy that came over Catherine O'Hara's face when that song started. <laughs> So stupid. What makes you think of that? What what what, what do you think of when you actually uh, I'm thinking of how I would um, ask the uh, sound and music people on SCTV to find stock music so I could write a melody and lyrics over it, and that's what that was. It was from Hatful of Rain, mm-hmm. from the score of Hatful of Rain, but but I just wrote a different melody and of course stupid lyrics over it. And it was just fun to do. It's I, really fun. I think you like writing characters that sing. Sure, why not? Not, not most, people, most, <laughs> most, most comedians don't, I'd say that. Okay. A, lot, a lot of comedians don't. Oh, I don't know. I remember Joe Flaherty on SCTV. You know, we for a while there we were doing the 90-minute shows and we would have a band on and then we'd have to write a scene for them or want to write a scene. We'd, they'd have to do it. We'd force them into doing scenes. And uh, Joe Flaherty all said, oh, no, it's a mutual love affair. Every musician wants to be a comedian and every comedian wants to be a musician. <laughs> and you get to be both. Yeah. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and there's musicians yeah. and comedians. I'm thinking about it, though. Musicians and – oh, really? Does it make you a little? Just, just, I think just talking about myself. Really? Makes me heat up. Makes you a little nervous. Yeah. I don't know what it is. That's yeah. a weird thing. Can I be honest? This is a weird thing to do. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of a weird. Suddenly, it's like life is going on. And then all of a sudden, okay, I'm talking about something I did. What am I talking about? What? Well, you're a real inspiration yeah. to a lot of people. Oh, it's it's thanks, good to talk about nice. the things that you've done. No, it is. It's great. Can we go I'll to go a... home and I go? Oh, I should have said this. I should have said that. I should. Yeah. Nah, you're doing great. Uh, let's play. Let's play another song you've sang. Oh, good. This, okay. is, this is a one from your work with uh, the great filmmaker Christopher Guest. Take a listen. <laughs> Your kiss, there's a kiss at the end of the rainbow.
That is Catherine O'Hara singing with her Schitt's Creek co-star Eugene Levy in the Christopher Guest folk music comedy A Mighty Win. What happened? You've played so many different characters. Uh, you work with Christopher Guest over the collaborators over the years. What do you what, what do you think of when you hear that? Uh, it's a lovely song. When I first heard it, I thought, it's kind of soft, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, what was I thinking we should do? And it's so be- it's so beautiful. And when you, I don't know, in the context of the movie, excuse me, you see the pain that these two suffered as a couple and the distance and, you know, then getting together and again after so much pain in the past and Eugene's character is so troubled. Uh, it was just lovely, lovely to do and, and sing. And then, uh, and I also think of... Uh, how the song got nominated for an Oscar. Mm-hmm. And was that a surprise? Well, you know, well, I mean, it deserves to be, but you never expect whatever. You know, those things are just kind of bonuses, I guess, for people. But um, but the treat for Eugene and me was a nerve-wracking treat, was that we got to go on the show and sing it. Yeah. And we weren't the nominees because we didn't write that song. And, you know, and we weren't, uh, uh, you know, we weren't there as nominees and we weren't even there as presenters or anything because there's a lot of nervous people <laughs> at that affair. And uh, it was just so fun to be backstage for rehearsals and we got the last great Oscar gift basket. What was in it? Trips galore, like to Cabo, to... Trips? Sonoma, um, to um, Napa Valley. Uh, there was one to New Zealand that included flights and stayed in some kind of treetop... Hotel. I didn't even take advantage of that. There was a trip to Banff that I couldn't do because I got sick, and it included helicopters and free skiing and three different hotels and, uh, oh, dinners. Wolfgang Puck comes to your house. Not him, but his people. Come to your house and do a dinner for 12. Including, it was like I did take advantage of that and had my brother Marcus and my sister Mary Margaret there visiting and some friends. Ridiculous, beautiful food. Just 18 courses coming out in, in my home. It was the best. I'd never... I guess I haven't hired a lot of staffs for parties in my life, but coming out of the bedroom, you know, usually I'm in a panic getting dinner ready or whatever. I come out of the bedroom and this lovely looking man comes up to me and says, would you like a drink? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> it's like, here in my house. So this I, is fun. I, I expected the gift basket would be like, you know, donuts and maple syrup no. and, you know, and a... Uh, cashmere and, oh, uh, tequila for a year, champagne for a year, oh, chocolate and roses for a year, candles for a year. It just kept coming and coming and coming. And... It was worth two hundred and ten thousand dollars or something what? at the time, and <laughs> she was chagrined. And um, uh, we had to have an armed guard escort us to the. And all we had was a basket of certificates, basically. Really? Yeah. yeah. I that gotta get nominated. For, I gotta get nominated for. An they don't Oscar. have them anymore. Now oh. it's a big tax thing, and you have to go to a gift lounge. <laughs> I shouldn't complain about this, but it is kind of humiliating. Now you go to a gift lounge, and you have to go around, and they go, and you are. Right. And somebody's with you going, oh, she's on a show called Shit's Creek, or yeah. she did Home Alone. Oh, right. Um, would you like this T-shirt? Oh, no. <laughs> like, That's my kind of gift basket. It's a free T-shirt with Molson Canadian on the front of it or something like <laughs> hey, I'd that. I go for that. I know. I take that as well. Is there yeah. one of the songs we played today or one of the songs from your movie, your TV career, that you still sing around the house? Well, I've been, I sang Sally's song a lot right before we do that show, like in Brooklyn or before at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, for about a month before doing vocal exercises because the rest of the year I'm not singing. Um, no, I don't know. I love like- actually Eugene and I, once in a blue moon, when we're at someone's house and they get some songs going, we'll sing Next to You, the song Eugene wrote uh, that isn't, I don't think it's in the movie. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's at the concert. When I sing and you guys do, you, guys do, a, da, you guys do a little da, da. performance? No, just f- with friends. But just they're for all fun. performing, yeah. But that song is lovely. Eugene wrote it. It's you great. Sh- you should think about putting out a record. You ever think about that? I think about it, but no. I'll leave that to my sister, Mary Margaret. How about you? Well, I think she should put out a record, too. Can you tell yeah, her to do that? Could she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like that, too, to be yeah, honest. Wouldn't that be great? Catherine O'Hara, uh, thanks for coming in. Come back for longer That's next it? time. Wow, that was quick. Well, you got a hard out, they say. G- <laughs> you got a hard out. I should have given this a little more thought. I mean, you know, that's the tagline of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Not for you, but for any guest. Catherine O'Hara, thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. Catherine O'Hara is a Canadian actor, comedian, national treasure. I've been speaking with her live in studio. Schitt's Creek premieres tonight on CBC.